What is up, YouTube? I'm BJ Zell, and this is episode four of Cartooning 101. Today's episode's all about eyes, so I'm gonna walk you through how to do different styles of eyes, both men and women's, ranging from kind of semi-realistic to super cartoony, and show you some tips and tricks along the way. So if you wanna learn all about that and more, keep watching. All right, guys, let's jump into today's video. Uh, for the video, I'm using an iPad Pro 12.9 inch first gen model along with the Apple Pencil and Procreate, but these tutorials are not digital based. Uh, you can follow along just using a pencil and paper at home. So let's get started. First thing to start out with an eye, every eye is just going to basically be a round circle. Now, if we're drawing this from the front view, much like the heads, if you just kind of split this into horizontal and vertical lines it'll give you the center of the eye so we'll draw this in and this is kind of how i started out the previous videos too if you haven't watched those this is the third one or i'm sorry the fourth one actually in the series on cartooning 101 so hop back and check those out if you haven't already uh, we worked on drawing the head from a front view a three quarters view and a side view in videos one through three so that is your basic eye looking at it straight from the center. We've got the pupil there, and then we can go ahead and draw the iris around here. And that's going to be a front-facing eye. So the key comes in when you start moving around the position of the head. So the eye itself, uh, this is super, super morbid, and do not try this at home, but if you were to pull your eyeball out of your eye socket, you would see that your eye is spherical, it is ball shaped. So when we start changing the position of the head, the eyes are gonna move along with the head. So with this being a front positioned eye, if we were to move the head and have it facing in that three quarters position, so if we take the, the face here and we have it turned like so and have the eyes over like this, this eye is going to follow the same curves of that head and it's going to take up a three-dimensional space and it's going to be spherical. So this is really important when you start drawing in uh, different perspectives is that the eye follows along with those perspectives. Now, of course, if we are using something like this, that three quarters perspective, the one thing that you do need to keep in mind is everything on this left-hand side is going to take up more surface area than on this right-hand side because of the perspective. So that needs to follow along to the eyes as well. So if we go ahead and draw another eye over here, this eye, since it's set a little bit further back perspective-wise, it needs to follow the same curves, but it is going to be smaller. So you see this circle over here is larger, this one's smaller, and then if we put the nose bridge in there, you'll see it's gonna be hidden. So this eye here is gonna take up a lot more area, and that's one of the, the key principles and things you need to keep in mind when you're drawing in a perspective like this is to make sure that you have the sizes correct for the eyes and have the one larger than the other. Also with this center line, that center line is going to basically represent where the eye is looking. So as the gaze of the eye changes, that center line will change as well. So you'll see this is going to be looking here. This will be here. Kind of a center one can be looking just kind of straight out at the viewer. Uh, and then as this angles down, as the eye faces down and looks down, this will move as well and kind of follow along that vertical axis. So keep that in mind as well. Once you start changing the direction of the eye and which way the character or the design is looking. So, We'll go ahead here and start out with a couple of basic eye shapes. So that's one of the great things about cartooning. If you're going for realism, it has to look a certain way. With cartooning, there are so many different styles and techniques that you can use, and we'll go over a few of those now. So the first thing I wanna do here, let's do a female eye, and we'll make this just fairly more on the realistic side. So the eyeball itself, is round, but the shape of the eye is gonna be determined once you actually start working in the eyelids. That's what's gonna give it its shape. So with a regular human eye, you're gonna have a very almond type shape to the eye. 
Uh, we'll have this being the, the bridge of the nose here. So you'll have the tear duct over here and then the eye will come back around into this almond shape. Now when drawing female eyes, usually what I like to do is this top line. We've talked about line weight in previous videos, make this top line a lot heavier. I do it kind of thin coming out right here, but as you start to trail back, make it a lot thicker and you can trail off into the eyelash here up at the top. Then usually bring this down like so, keeping that overall almond shape to it. Uh, if you're not comfortable with getting a thick line like this, just with that single stroke, if you're working just with pencils, you can also do this same technique just by kind of doing this, doing a top line, and then coloring and filling in. But if you are using digital or uh, if you're doing traditional, you can get the same technique if you're using brush pens. I absolutely love brush pens. You can get a lot of really cool line weights out of there just by kind of altering how hard you push down and the way that you let the brush uh, tip kind of flow as you do your lines. So we'll do a couple more of these eyelashes here up top and then bring this back down and around. And like I said, with that top one being heavier line weight, I like to keep the bottom one a little bit lighter line weight, uh, just because that one gives off that effect that the eyelashes are up there without having to draw in every single one here. I don't really like doing that, and I think it looks a little weird, and I like this, this technique a little bit better. So let's go ahead and throw in the pupil of our eye here. A nice circle here going on. Now the next thing to do with the pupil is add in the highlights for that. And with those, I usually like to do a pretty big round one here or just wherever you've got the light source coming in. And then a smaller one to give that kind of highlight effect to it. And then you can pull down the iris then from there. And then this you can kind of just shade in to give that effect of the the color of the iris coming around like so. Next step is the eyelid on the top and with this you can kind of just follow along here. So what the lines here are doing, it's, it's following that same path so you see basically where the eye sits underneath the skin and that's what this eyelid is going to do here. I usually pull out this top one a little bit further here pull this down and around, then you can throw in some shading back in here, like so. With uh, female eyes too, it's really important to kind of keep the lines under here kind of limited. Uh, if you want to put like a really slight, light, thin weighted line under there, you can, but the more lines you put under the female eye, the older it's going to make the character look. So definitely be careful with that. And you see, I've got this little tear duct in here and we can kind of just shade in here to kind of give that eye a little bit of dimension to it. And then the eyebrow then followed up here. And with the eyebrows for women, uh, definitely keep those thinner it reads more feminine and same thing here. I usually like to go just heavier on that bottom line, put the line weight there and then go lighter towards the top. So that is example one of an eye. So let's go ahead and drop down here and we will use the same principles and start to make it a little bit more cartoony. This one has somewhat realistic look to it, but it still has, you know, the, the cartoony look to a point uh, this one is not going to be a 100% realistic one, but you'll see we'll take this and kind of go a little bit even more cartoony with it. So once again, let's start out with the almond shape. So we'll get that kind of here from the center. And with these, you kind of want the front, if we go ahead and do the lines here, you kind of want the front almond to start here on the center line and I usually kind of angle it up here towards the back instead of setting it just straight across. It gives a nice flow to the eye. And then with this one, we're gonna go, like I said, a little bit more comic-y. So we're gonna go ahead and angle this a little bit more. So you'll see we've got kind of these sharp angles in here, which gives it a nice comic book feel to it. And then start to kind of darken this in and around to give that upper eyelash area.
And once again, if you can do this in one stroke or like I'm filling it in here, or like I said, if you just wanna kinda draw the top, draw the bottom and then color it in, you can do that as well. Let's go ahead and pull these out. And again, I'm not getting a great taper on these cause I've got the thing set really big, but kinda get the idea. And then once again with the eyelid here, we'll pull this up and kinda have it angled a little bit more. Get the, the brow here. I think I'm just gonna use that just solid line there because we're getting kind of close to this top one here. And then as this comes down and around, this is where uh, usually don't add in that tear duct part and just kind of keep this simple to keep that cartoony look going on without adding in too much. And with this, you'll see I'm not actually connecting the eye down and around. I'm just using light line weights here to give the kind of illusion where the eye goes it's kind of suggesting it comes this way and then without actually connecting these it makes it have that nice cartoony appearance to it and then we can go ahead and throw the pupil in here along with the iris so there we go so you see this one has a little bit more of that cartoon feel. We're working with some different angles here. It looks a little bit more animation-like, a little bit more comic style. So it gives you a different option for the overall look of that. So that being said, let's go on and do another one using the same technique. So we'll do the, the circle here for this next eye. And for this one, instead of actually doing this outline here, we're gonna go more of a circle on this one. So we're taking it one step further into the cartoon realm. So we're gonna start with a light line here and follow this around. It's gonna have kind of a little bit more of that oval shape to it. We'll see, just kind of one swoop is all I'm doing here to give that technique. And then here you can go ahead and kind of fill this in and around where that eye part comes with the circle. And then this will be the, the thick lash part here at the top just by following this around. And that's one of the good things by drawing in that initial circle. You can kind of see where everything is supposed to be lined up at. And then the same thing here. I'm just going to kind of use a lighter line to suggest where the rest of the eye comes in at. And then we'll pull this out and around in the back for the lashes. As you can see, I've got the lashes really big back here in the back, so it's got a really kind of exaggerated car cartoon style to it now. I'm gonna move this one down just a little bit. So we got some more room to work. And then let's go ahead and throw the pupil in the same general area that we had it before with the iris. Let's go ahead and knock in our upper lid here. And then our brow. And then our highlights. Okay, so I'll pull this down here. And there you can see, once again, we're just moving from semi-realistic at the top and just kind of changing the style that we're using and getting more cartoony as we go down and you can kind of see the difference that it's making in the overall just appearance of the design so let's do this one more time here I'm gonna move these off to the side and let's start out with a another circle and this one we're just gonna go super super cartoony with and we're just going to basically do a circle so the other one, we kind of angled it. And um, this one here too, we can change the pupil and maybe put it here towards the center, make it smaller, and then just kind of trail these back so it's not super thick here in the back, but it kind of gives that same illusion of the, the eyelash coming up there and then the brow here. And there we go. So you can see this one is quite a bit more cartoony than even the last one. And really with this, you just have to, to find your style, find what you like, what you want your designs to come across as. There's just so many ways to do cartoons, especially eyes, and everybody has their own style. Once you start feeling comfortable with your style is really where you're gonna take off as an artist. Uh, so one of the, the key points that I always look for with my style is if 
I post something online and I don't have my name attached, if people would see it and think, okay, that's that's BJ Dell's, that's I can kind of see that that's his style. Uh, that's always one of the the things that I kind of strive for. Uh, there's so many times you'll see a lot of stuff on line and the the way it's drawn everybody kind of draws the same way and copies off of other artists and stuff like that so once you kind of get to the point of having your own style is really what you want to shoot for uh so now we can take it one step even further and with this one we'll go ahead and this is like the old school cartooning way putting the eyes really close here together and just following these around like this so this is like a really simple basic cartoon way of drawing and with this you usually can draw you know the the irises different sizes along with the pupils different sizes but in this of course it's key to add in those lashes here in the back so that you can tell that it's a female character so just throw those in and like I said usually I just go do a couple I don't go super crazy with them usually just like three or four at a time uh, so that's not taking up the entire top of the, the eye and then you can do the eyebrows here. So that's the, the kind of next step on the way to cartooning is this one's going super exaggerated with it. And you can see that we kind of used the, the basic shapes of the circles, but just exaggerated them as we went around. We just basically used where they were falling here and then extended them up here. And then finally, uh, I think one of the simplest eyes that you can do is just basically almost like the button eye. So if you just draw this in and it's almost just like a really big pupil and then you can throw in some eyelashes here and then an eyebrow and that reads, you know, super feminine, but you know, it's cute and it's easy to draw. So it still has uh, a nice look to it and depending on what style you're going for or, or what the overall image you want uh, to appear as, it could be as simple as doing something like this. So that gives you a few different ideas. There's what, three, four, five, six different ways of drawing the female eye. So next up, let's go on to the male eye. And this is gonna start out the exact same way. So of course we start out with the circle here. And then for the male eye, the, the key is, let's go ahead and do it uh, the kind of realistic way here. So we're still gonna have the the kind of slim almond shaped eye here but as we do the the eyebrow around or the uh, eyelash around this top I'm gonna go heavier but not as heavy as the females and also I'm not gonna worry about putting the eyelashes in with male characters of course they do have eyelashes but when you start to add eyelashes to male characters, they come across really feminine. So definitely be careful about that. Same thing with lips we talked about last time in the profile video. And then the eyebrow here. And of course with male eyebrows, they're going to be a lot thicker. But once again too, I also like to, if you're going to shade this in, I like to have that heavy bottom line. The line weight of that's going to be a lot thicker than the top. You can just throw that in there. And then the iris along, or the pupil along with the, the iris here. Go a little bit bigger on that one. Just kind of shade this in. And with the male eye, you can go ahead and add in that bottom crease and like I said, with these, it doesn't really make the males appear as old as it does adding that bottom crease to the females. And then we'll pull this around so it's one solid. All right, so there's the first male eye. So let's go ahead and move on to the second one, just like we did with the females. Make another round circle here. And then I'm going to go ahead and I'll drew, draw these lines in here as well so you can kind of see where the almond shape starts. He like said it started up here and kind of comes out to the back. Uh, with females too, I usually like to accentuate that curve and have this part come up higher with the almond shape. As you're doing a male, uh, the back side is going to come closer down here to the center. Won't have it exactly straight across, but that's usually how I try to do that. 
So once again, let's do this one a little bit more comic style. So we're going to just start to kind of add some angles to this as it comes around. Same thing here, and you see I did not connect the lines. It's just more of the illusion that they're coming together, the suggestion to the viewer that that's where the eye sits without actually connecting them. Especially once you color this in, that can give you a nice look because uh, the colors are going to do the work of the eye instead of having the, the line do that. And the other thing, too, what that does is it makes that line weight of this top eye look that much heavier without having those connecting. So another kind of tip and trick that you can use there. There's that. Do the upper lid here. And then the brow. Oops. So that gives you a secondary way. Like I said, this one's more kind of like that, that comic book feel. you got the, the stronger angles there, and you can see it's starting to kind of change the overall look and the technique that's used. You can tell the difference between the top one and the bottom one. So let's do the, the next one down here. And with males, too, they're going to have a little bit slimmer eyes. Uh, with females, you almost, if you're doing like the pinup style or the cute girl style, almost want that kind of wide-eyed doe look. Um, but the, the males usually keeping them, you know, a little bit thinner is the way to go. So we'll go ahead and start this one. We'll just go really blocky on this one. And then with this, we're actually not even going to do a bottom line whatsoever. So we'll just take this completely out. So this is a, a good technique to use, especially if you're doing the, the coloring of the art piece. You can use the, the white here and into the skin color, and it's going to kind of break that off without actually drawing in the line. And then we'll make this really kind of angled as well. All right, so there's kind of the next step, kind of removing a couple of lines and making that just even more cartoonish or comic book stylish. So let's take it one step further here and we will go with that round like we did before. Uh, with this, like I said, uh, usually going bigger with the women's eyes, this is something that I would probably reserve for uh, like kids or uh, teenagers or something like that. Uh, just this kind of wide round circle it doesn't read super well for for male adults unless you're going for like a surprise look which we'll talk about that later in the expressions video uh, but this is going to read a little bit younger so we'll put this uh, down in the center here the the pupil and the iris And there's taking the, the next step and making it even more simplified. So there's another version of the eye you can do. And then we'll take that one more step even further and just go perfectly round. Let's do a line here, a line here for the upper eyelid. We'll just do a basic line here for the eyebrow. And Let's do this here for the eye, and you'll see this is kind of a super quick way to knock in an eye. It's going to look super cartoony. So that is a, another option that you can use just with a you know perfectly circular eye, not really adding in the eyelids that come over the top of the eye. We can add in this, this eyelid here in the crease in the top, but it's just a very plain eye. And then once again, with the like we did with the female character, we can take the two circles together and just do that old school, just very basic cartoon look. Just having the two circles coming together and connect in the center here. Uh, of course, there's different ways you can do this, like the Jim Davis way with Garfield. You know, you can actually have these together here or. Uh, like I did it the first time here, you actually have them connected. There's not actually a line that comes down here in the center that breaks them up. 
they're actually just one big piece there. Uh, but then this is going to read more male just because of the eyebrows that we throw in. They're going to be bigger. And we're not going to do the eyelashes coming off the back like we did with the females. So it's going to read totally different than that first one that we did with the females. And then finally, like I said with the, the previous female one, just that round kind of button eye look. Throwing the couple of highlights in there. And once again, just a bigger brow is going to read that it's a male. And doing the same over here. And you'll see as I'm drawing these side by side, um, the one thing I really wanted to stress here, especially with drawing eyes like this, if you are using digital, one thing that I would recommend not doing is either using symmetry when you're drawing to where you draw over here and it's going to draw this other eye over here, or once you're done duplicating this and flipping it, um, I think it looks really weird and it's a, definitely a good choice to draw the eyes separately. Even if you want to duplicate this and flip it over and drop down the opacity and draw on top of it, uh, I wouldn't just use the exact same eye mirrored over uh, just because in humans our you know, left eye compared to our right eye is going to look a little bit different. And if you've got them perfectly symmetrical, on the the design on the character it's gonna look just a little bit off it's gonna have almost that kind of uncanny valley feeling to it so I would definitely avoid doing that okay and this next part here let's go ahead last video we talked about doing profiles so drawing the head from the side the eye is gonna basically work exactly the same here but the eye is facing this way the iris is going to be here so it's a, a side view and i start out the same way with the the eye but it's going to actually appear more in a triangle so i'll start here by drawing a just angled line out this way this is going to represent that top eyelash and the top lid and then another line this way is going to be the bottom and then you can draw in the eye here. Just knock in the, the pupil and the iris here. And then if you just pull this up and out for the eyelash for a female character, same thing here like we did before. Always wanting the, the front eyelash to be the longest. I usually pull this in and down in front of that eye to where it looks like it's coming back behind there. And then you can pull this in around. Of course, your upper eyelid is going to be here. And then your brow. Make that a little bit tinier there. So that's the, the female profile. Uh, with males, I don't always like to go as narrow on that angle. I usually like to bring the top out just a little bit more. Um, or even still is kind of square this off kind of like we did the comic book style ones before so it's a little bit more squared that looks a little bit more masculine when you're doing the the side views same thing with the eyelids here if you go a little bit more angled and then of course you're going to have the bigger brow and it just reads a little bit more masculine this made a little bit too thick just because we don't want it to, to read like there's too many eyebrows there or eyelashes so that's the the profile version of course with kids uh, if you're doing kids just draw those even bigger and more wide-eyed to give the kids look so uh, one of the other things that I like to do is just using different uh, lines we'll talk more like I said expression wise but uh, using different lines across the eyes to represent either the character's expression or disposition uh, if we break the eye here with a line coming up at an angle, this is going to give that kind of sinister look or almost like an upset look. Somebody that you don't want to mess with, that type of thing. And these are a lot of fun to do depending on the, like I said, the style of character that you're doing. And then the pupil having it come in and rest underneath that line makes for a, a really nice design. throwing the iris around there and then with the iris too you know depending on the style you're using you don't always have to throw that in there sometimes um, it might just look better just having the solid black for the pupil 
it just really depends on what kind of design that you want to do. And like I said, that's one of my favorite things about cartooning is just being able to do all these different types of designs and not really having to worry about, uh, you know, realism too much on these. You can kind of make them what you want and what you have in mind and you don't have to, you know, worry, hey, this is a little bit off here. Or that eye wouldn't do that if that eye did that. And that's one of the fun things. Of course, like we talked about with perspectives, you're always going to have to make sure that everything lines up perspective wise. Uh, because even in cartoons, that's going to stay the same. So if something's too close, if something's too far away, it is going to look really weird in relationship to the rest of the design and the piece. But I really like doing designs like this that kind of stretch it out a little bit more. And you obviously wouldn't get a, a total look like this from a realistic character. So it's kind of fun to do these and be able to just kind of play with it and, and have fun with your designs. So that's kind of like a, a male eye with the upset look to it. And we could take this even one step further. So uh, here, let's do, and let's do both eyes this time. So I'm going to draw the two eyes. And usually if it's a front facing character, like we talked before, you want about an eyes width between the two character or between the two eyes. So if you see here, we draw another circle in here is about an eyes width in between there. Of course, with cartoons, like I said, you can get them a little bit closer if you want. This one I'm going to have a little bit closer. So I've got the eyes there. And with the straight line coming across, I'm going to make a, just a solid brow coming across here that both eyes are going to sit on. And this is when you can get into some like really fun cartoon stuff. So we'll draw the bottoms of the eyes in here, and I'm going to make those pretty heavy. So they're going to look a little bit more sunken in. And I can get those lines coming down for the wrinkles underneath the eyes. And then once again, having these pupils set in underneath that brow. And we'll go ahead and draw the, the iris down here. And then now with the brows, we can actually have these come from here and touch. So we still have that top of the eyelid there and it's just coming across. And I, I just like that look. Of course, too, you could even pull these up and have these attached, the eyes attached to the bottom of the brow would be another option that you could do for that kind of sinister look. It just depends on, once again, what your character design has going for it and what you want to convey to the person that's reading or looking at your artworks, reading it if it's a, you know, a comic book or good way of storytelling is, you know, being able to use different techniques and like this different expressions to definitely convey that the story to the the reader without actually having to even go in and, and read the lines of text there we'll just throw this in here we can even pull these up in the center here kind of as creases coming along but that shows you a different way that you can do the eyes going even more cartoony and just like I said breaking that line straight across looks really really cool so definitely take the techniques that you learned in today's video give them a whirl see what you can do with them and play around and become a better artist all right guys that is it for today's video as always thank you for watching I appreciate it if you like today's video too make sure you give it a thumbs up subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and hit the bell for notifications so you can get alerted when I post new videos and speaking of new videos the next one is going to be focusing on how to draw the nose so we're going to go over different styles of noses and tips and techniques to draw them better and then moving on to other traits uh, mouths ears so on and so forth we move on to the body uh, action poses there's so much left in this series so hang around for the rest of it and hit that bell so you can get alerted when i post them uh, also if you like the video if you like the content and want to support the channel i do have a patreon now and the link is in the description below for that as well so you can hop on over and support and get rewarded with some pretty cool tiers uh, also for me i can be found online bjdell.com as well as on instagram and twitter at bjdell so until next time keep creating